In the kitchen is the story of a man in crisis. He's called Gabriel and he is executive head chef at the Imperial Hotel in London. It's a high pressure job and then a number of things happen which increase his stress levels exponentially. The dead body of a kitchen porter is found in the basement, his father is diagnosed with cancer and against his better judgment he begins cheating on his girlfriend. And all these things combine to push him to the edge. Hotels are fascinating because they're microcosms of society. You get everything from the penthouse suite at the top down to the porter compacting rubbish in the basement and everything in between. But it was always the kitchen that I was drawn to the most because they're like UN assemblies down there. You get every different nationality. So they're a really rich source of diverse stories for a writer. Well, I think that anyone who's ever eaten in a restaurant or a hotel dining room sometimes wonders about what goes on behind the scenes. I think what we don't see on our TV screens is the extent to which there is an invisible working class now. I mean, we've come to depend on this um, new cheap labour force, which is geographically very diverse. Um, some really amazing stories of making it out of um, one end of the world to another and the courage that it takes to make that journey. Close to the beginning of the book, Gabriel, who is the protagonist and the head chef, gives his sous chef, his deputy, a lecture about custard and how it is the proteins in the egg yolk that does the thickening of the sauce. And as they heat up, they vibrate faster and faster and their internal bonds begin to break down and they unravel. And this is what is happening to Gabriel as well. He starts off ambitious and successful and in control. And as the pressures in his work and family and personal life bear on him, he begins to heat up too. And he begins to unravel as well. So it's a book about faith, hope, love, and custard. <laughs>